I feel like whoever I say, people are gonna get annoyed. Might get stabbed, you might, but you might not. Am I buying subscribers? Cause you're all nosy. It's time to do a Q and A. I noticed, well, the last few months, I've been getting like comments and likes on a really old video actually. Um, I did a Q and A two years ago at the end of 2021, which is absolutely bonkers. And I haven't done one since because I don't really care to do these things usually, um, but I have got quite a lot of new subscribers. So thank you. And I always get asked similar questions. So I thought let's just stick it at the end of Vlogmas. Um, some of you guys might be interested because we're all a bit nosy, aren't we? And I don't blame you. Um, so yeah, I asked on Instagram, what do you want to ask me guys? And I got a bunch of questions. A lot of them are very similar. So I thought this would be fun for those of you who care. And if you don't care, I hope you enjoyed Vlogmas. <laughs> I'm gonna try and blitz this the best that I can. Um, what is your favorite thing you've vlogged? I think there's two things in that. One being I love doing, I mean, I've only done a few, but airline vlogs, I think it's so fun. Um, I love watching airplane videos. Um, I'm a big fan. Um, I always think they're really fun and it's that kind of exciting feeling of like going on holiday. Although quite a lot of my videos were work trips. Um, a second thing, and I would say this to you guys watching this, even if you have no interest in ever, ever having your own channel, don't blame you. Videoing holidays, and I know I went on holiday with my family back in, when was that, August. Um, I ended up deciding not to like put it online. I'm sure you can understand. I, it just was too much like personal stuff. So I was like, nah, but it's nice to have a family holiday video. And I do the same for actual Christmas day. I use my camera, I'll use this camera and film kind of fun bits of people opening presents. And then I make a little video and then just share it privately with my family. I do that every so often. Um, that's a really good thing to do. So I'm not sure if that answered the question, but would recommend. What's my plan for new year? Nothing. I absolutely hate new year. I could not care less if I went to a party I'm not interested by New Year's Eve I don't care I just want to stay in I don't want to drink I don't want to eat anymore and I just want to chill so I'm not I've never been a New Year's fan favorite place to walk in London um I absolutely love Regent's Park I've done a couple of videos I don't know if they're still up I'm sure I'll do another one in the new year I love Regent's Park it's my fave how do you balance content creating alongside your day job I'm tired that is the bottom line. Um, <laughs> um, it has been quite difficult and look, it's it's my decision. This is what I do with my free time. Um, so yeah, for those of you who aren't aware, I have a full-time job. This is not my job. I work Monday to Friday. Um, I try to film either, I mean, it depends what it is. I try to go out on a Saturday morning, worst case Sunday. I don't really like vlogging on Sunday. Um, I just feel like I haven't achieved what I need to achieve. So depending on what it is, I'll film obviously on the weekend, I will edit maybe for like two hours on a Sunday morning and then an hour on Monday after work, depends. Tuesday, I don't, I try to have like a free day and then Wednesday evening, I will try to, if I finish work on time, blitz two hours, hence why I, <laughs> I tend to only socialize on a Thursday and Friday um, with my friends because I'm just too tired. So I try to blitz it then. Um, I think... The, one of the other questions is how long does it take to make these videos? I'm sure some other content creators will laugh and this is probably embarrassing, but probably takes me, I don't know, a few hours to film it because I'm usually out and about. I don't tend to do, you know, like home videos. I don't really like doing those. I find them quite boring. So yeah, two, three hours filming, going to a place, enjoying, and then usually I'm going out and doing something after with my friends anyway. To edit that, I'm a really slow editor. Um, I do really try maybe three to four hours to edit like a half an hour, 20 minute video. And then I probably, I'm not very good at it guys, but my thumbnails, um, usually me just pointing at something. They're a bit cringe, aren't they? I don't really know what else to do. Maybe 20 minutes, half an hour to do a thumbnail. It takes a while for the video to like render into an MP4. I mean, I can just leave my computer running overnight. Um, and then I do go in and I try my best to fix the closed captions. So those subtitles that you see, they're usually wrong and they're hilarious. Whenever I say selfridges, and I'm gonna have to fix this in this one, it always says sausages or salvages. Harrods always comes up as Herods. I'm just thinking of the stores that I have um, always have to correct. So anyway, that's why I'm not worried about AI because you can't even get correct closed captions on YouTube yet. 
anyway, so it does take a long time, um, but it's my choice and I do enjoy it. What is my daily routine? Guys, I go to work. <laughs> it's really not that exciting, which is why I don't do like home vlogs. And I have, I cannot stand videos where people do montages of making cups of tea and putting the washing out and getting in the car. Like I literally can't stand videos like that. And that's just my personal taste. Um, anyway, what was the question? Daily routine, I go to work Monday to Friday. I'm in the office um, quite a bit. I sometimes get the tube, I sometimes cycle, I sometimes drive to work if, if I can. Um, yeah, and I'm at work most of the time and then I come home, I'm trying to run. I haven't run that much in the last two weeks though, but that's okay, it's fine, it's Christmas. I'm trying to run usually four times a week. Um, it just makes me feel a lot better. Sometimes I run before work, um, but I do find I get to about 2 p.m. and I'm like falling asleep at my desk. So I have started, I did this a while ago, a PT, although I feel like I'm a bit behind with the last few weeks um, where I wasn't able to go. So yeah, I do go to a PT a couple of times a week now and that, has helped massively with running and then yeah I try to socialize once a week if I could be bothered I'm not the most social of people I never have been um but yeah and then I try and see my family every so often so that's my daily routine did I go to uni I did a very long time ago because I'm old <laughs> um I went to uni um in London called Central St Martins it's like a design university um it's kind of known for for design and fashion and whatnot is living in London like a movie no well depends what movie if you want like a crime movie or something like that then yeah um I did get asked this a lot of like are my vlogs realistic no of course they're not I mean I love London that's why I live here um the type of videos that I like to put out, and I'm gonna kind of combine a few questions of why do I make these videos? I love London and I genuinely get fed up with people being so negative about London and I'm gonna use the word pissing on London and being negative. Of course, it's a city, um, you might get stabbed, you might, but you might not, you know, you might get mugged, but you might not. And I think London's great. There's so many amazing things that you can do, whether you're a tourist, local. Yeah, it can be like a movie sometimes. I mean, when was that? Like a couple of weeks ago, I was cycling really, really early in the morning to go to the office. And I was cycling through a beautiful part of Notting Hill. And like the sun was coming up, it was so dark still. And I was just like, wow this is pretty cool. Like this just feels really magical. And then other times I get on the bus and I'm like, oh my God, there's a fight. I'm actually going to die. You know? So it depends on the day. Favorite shop place you have vlogged this year. I'll say my favorite shop to show, I think probably is Fortnum and Mason. I think it always surprises me how many people share the love for Fortnum's, even though they've maybe never been there. I think it's a really special store. Um, but I would say this Christmas, it's been really hard to video. Like I've tried really hard to film, not get in the way of people, not bother anyone. Um, I tried my best and actually saying that, um, I was on TikTok last night and someone had filmed the queue outside Fortnum and Mason and it was like a little roped queue down the side of the building, down to like German street. It was crazy and I was like, I'm so glad I filmed when I did. Can I make more vlogs of fashion shopping in 2024? Yes, I will, and no, I don't know. I think I've kind of set myself up for this. Some of my videos are obviously very fashion focused. Some of them are just general shopping. Some of them are food, because it's just what I'm interested in. So I know some people hate the fashion videos. Some people love them. So it'll always be a mix. I think quite a lot of the questions are, what do I want to do on my channel in 2024? And I sit here and honestly, I don't really know. And what is interesting, or you could say the challenge on YouTube these days is that a lot of people wanna watch channels for a very specific topic. And I think I would say even for myself, there's channels that I watch which are, I only wanna know what they bought in their fashion haul. I wanna watch a different channel for lighthearted, stupid entertainment, another one for travel very very clear reasons and topics and that also is a big 
way to be successful because you're really clear about what your content is. So when people say, oh, what do you want to do? I'm like, I can't, you kind of have to pick a lane. And at the moment, I'm a little bit all over the show. And I probably said this two years ago. You either become like the fashion beauty vlogger, which I would love to do, but you know, I don't, I'm not in with brands. I don't get sent anything, you know. Um, and it's kind of pretty cutthroat. If you're a lifestyle vlogger, I think this day and age, people have very high expectations of your storytelling, how interesting your life is. Let's be real, most people's lives aren't that interesting. We're all normal, right? And if you're gonna vlog most of your day-to-day -day life, it has to be incredibly interesting. There's a lot of competition out there. And then, you know, if you're a gamer, you're, you're doing that. So I don't know is basically my answer to that. I think I'm just gonna continue doing what I enjoy. Um, I definitely do wanna mix things up a little bit next year, I think. But I think it comes down to, I just wanna do stuff that I enjoy. I make videos that sometimes I know are gonna do well. Like for example, I know certain shopping videos will do well. There's other videos where I post it going, eh, do you know what? Yeah, it ranked really low on the views, but it's what I wanted to do and I'll do it again. And this kind of links onto some other questions of why are you making videos? Um, I love London, like I said earlier, but I just like sharing my interest in things and being positive um, about kind of what I'm showing and yeah, maybe someone watching it will also like what I'm showing. People are asking like my main accomplishments. I'm actually gonna be honest with you and skip those because I feel like I don't really want to put that on the internet. What are my favorite channels do I watch? Are the YouTubers now? I feel like whoever I say, people are gonna get annoyed because this is what I've learned. If I say I like a channel, people are like, you shouldn't like them, They're good. they should be canceled. I thought more of you, like I just can't, I can't be bothered. But what I would say um, is I think my taste in YouTube has changed considerably over the last couple of years. I used to watch a lot of like theme park and travel. That's kind of how I got into to doing YouTube um, in the first place. And I still like it, but I think from a YouTube perspective, it's not really something that I watch that much anymore. Um, I definitely watch a lot of architecture and interior design channels. Um, I do still watch quite a lot of travel. Like I said, I enjoy airline reviews and things like that. Just those kind of fun escapisms. And I watch a lot of like beauty and fashion vloggers. Although there's some questions on whether I watched other vlogmas or vlogmai. Do we call it vlogmai? I think I said that before. Um, yeah, I have watched a few other channels over the last month or so, but something I'm gonna say, and I'm probably gonna regret saying this, I think watching full-time YouTubers during Vlogmas has been quite painful because in my eyes or the way that they told the story, I don't know, it kind of showed that they don't really do a lot. <laughs> and I don't blame them. Fair play if you can earn a living and not have to get up really early. Fair play, I'm not hating on you. But um, when you have grown adults saying, oh my gosh, it's so dark outside, guys. I am ready to go. Well, yeah, most of us are already at work. So the fact that you're being all, oh, look at me, I've got my hair done and my makeup and I'm ready to go and it's still dark. I've already done a meeting and it's still dark outside. And I went traveled to work and rush hour. Look, like I say, it's no hate, I don't blame them, but I do think that I just, don't really find it very interesting watching some, only some of the full-time vloggers now. Why do I hate my iPhone 15 Pro? <laughs> this thing was the biggest waste of money of the year. There was a couple of questions were what, what were my good buys and bad buys for the year? But this 15 Pro, if you bought it, you bought it, but it, the camera on it is really bad. Most of it's out of focus. It doesn't take photos when the light is really dark or in low light. When I have used it for vlogging, there's been a considerable number of clips that I haven't been able to use because they're out of focus or um, quite often when I go to film, the camera is just black and nothing happens. So every time I speak to Apple, they're like, oh, just click the most, you know, do the next update. And I'm like, I've done it. They won't take my phone back. So I'm really disappointed in it. I will still use it if I'm filming in a place where it's not appropriate to have a camera. Some other questions actually are, why don't I have a gimbal? I get asked this a lot. 
Gimbals are not appropriate. Um, they might be fine to walk around a theme park or be on a holiday on a beach or something. In most places that I'm filming, especially when I'm in shops, like you're not even meant to, I don't even think sometimes you're meant to use a camera. There's some stores where like, to be fair, I always message them before I speak to like the security guard and say, hey, am I okay filming? I'd say seven times out of 10, they say you can use your phone, absolutely fine. If you use a separate camera, um, for example, Harrods, you're allowed to use a separate camera, but you're not allowed a gimbal, you're not allowed to use an action cam. I'm sure some people have filmed and just haven't been noticed. Um, people always say to me, why don't I use a GoPro? It's just, places are a bit funny about it. And to be fair, it's their property. They can have those rules. They also don't like you having like a proper, like fluffy external camera, like on the top of this, like this little clippy thing I'm holding is absolutely fine in most cases. So yeah, that's why. And I have changed, I don't know if I've already said this in this video, to this Sony camera. So we'll see how it goes. Um, what am I filming in? This is, um, I keep putting this jacket down, my gosh. Uh, this is in 4K 24 um, frames. So we'll see how this goes, I'll trial it, but yes. I can't remember what the question was now. If you could live anywhere, where would it be? Hampstead, <laughs> I think. And then I would love to live somewhere warm. I'm so over the English weather. I would definitely go and live in, in a warm country. Will I be vlogging next Christmas? Oh my God, I guess maybe. I might have been canceled by then, so we'll see. <laughs> Am I buying subscribers? No, oh my God, that's like so stupid. I know a lot of people do buy subscribers and there's a few other questions about, am I pleased with like the channel growth this year and all that? No, I don't buy subscribers. You can buy descri um, describers, subscribers, and I don't agree with it. YouTube doesn't seem to care, I don't think. Um, you can buy, so it, I think it costs quite a lot of money actually. So you can buy thousands, 10,000, it's obvious when people are doing it. If you have 500,000, I don't know, a million subscribers and you're getting like the same views that someone like me is getting, at, like 150,000 subscribers, like it's obvious that, I mean, you may have lost the kind of, I guess, viewership that does happen, I guess, if you've been on YouTube for quite a long time. Um, but it's, it's just so obvious. Um, they don't get cleared out like how I think they do on Instagram. It's very different. But yeah, it's something I've definitely learn and I guess not so ignorant to um in the last I guess the last six months or so that people do buy a lot of subscribers and we we're already talking about it um with someone I know who works in marketing and I was like why do people do that and they were saying basically say again you had a, a YouTube channel or you were Instagram or something and you had a very strong following so say you had I don't know 300,000 followers and 50,000 of them do everything that you say. They buy anything that you put in front of the camera, right? With an affiliate link or whatever. So you have a very strong conversion rate because they're gonna buy pretty much everything that you show them. Brands will love that. They will eat that up. But your following isn't massive. So people tend to buy subscribers. This is what they were telling me and it kind of makes sense. They will buy subscribers so that they then have 500,000 followers, if not more. So yeah, quite often half of them are fake. Um, and therefore you can go to a brand and go, hey, my conversion is still really high and the brand is, you know, all for it. And the subscribers are higher. So the reach is bigger, the impressions in theory are more, more people are gonna see it. Um, so you get paid a lot more money, a lot more money by the brands. So I kind of get why people do it, but it's also really stupid and you shouldn't do it. It's my opinion. I miss your theme park videos sorry about that <laughs> um so I'm gonna squash a few questions together things like why did I start this I'll try and answer it relatively quickly um I started this channel from a holiday that went on five years ago yeah over five years ago um with my family I went to Florida and I really enjoyed vlogging it and it was kind of a very easy way to get into it. I think if you ever want to start a YouTube channel, you've got to start talking about something that you genuinely enjoy and can freely talk about, whether it's a hobby, whether it's one particular 
topic, it's a really, really good way to start. And I think a theme park environment is very easy to vlog because everyone's filming holidays and like no one really cares. I then didn't do anything for about a year. I then filmed another holiday and then I think I did Vlogmas. Um, so I think the theme park videos, there was maybe 20 videos, might have been 23, maybe 24. Um, and then yeah, Christmas and then 2020 started and I was like, I still wanna make videos, but I don't wanna be a theme park vlogger and I can't be, I live in London and I wanna show London. And then I started doing lockdown videos, which I don't know, are they still on my channel? They might be, God, I probably look really, I probably look really young in those videos. Gosh, it was a while ago, wasn't it? Keep me in lockdown was nearly four years ago. Anyway, let's not talk about it. Um, yeah, and then I started making London videos and I was like, I way prefer doing this. This is more me, I feel more comfortable doing it. And it means that I can try and do a video a week, which is what I tried to do. And that's when I started taking this a little bit more seriously. And I was like, this is part of my out of work routine. This is fun. This is like my main hobby now. If you're still hoping for a theme park video, I'm really sorry. It's just not what I want to put. It's just not what I want to do anymore. I'm not particularly good at it. Um, I know I kind of, I did say in a video when I went to Florida in October, in October, in August, that I was filming, but like I said, when I came back and I looked at the footage, I was like, this film, it feels more just like a family home video. It's not a vlog. It was, didn't really make sense for a viewer to watch, but there's loads of good theme park vloggers out there. You don't need another one. Not me anyway. Am I giving up vlogging? No, I'm sure some people would like me to, but no, what I'm gonna do now is basically not vlog for all of January. I kind of get why people do that. I think I vlogged last January and then I was like burnt out by mid February. And next Friday, the last Friday of December, whenever that is, what's, what's next Friday's day? Um, there won't be a video. So Friday the 29th of December, there will not be a video. This is the last video of the year. And then I'll be back in February. It'll suddenly be February guys at some point in February anyway. So subscribe and then you will know when my next video comes up. It's the right time. Not really much is happening. Why do I pretend to live in London? Guys, I live in London. I'm certainly paying for a mortgage in London and all the bills. Um, <laughs> I think some people think that I don't live in London and then I get the train in and I pretend to live here. I don't know why. Has your life changed since making YouTube videos? No, <laughs> not at all. <laughs> um, I, no, is my simple answer to that. It's just, I have a little less time in my free, my free time, which is what I wanted out of this. This is quite a nice, consistent, creative thing to do outside of the day job. Would I recommend starting a YouTube channel? I guess if you want to, I think something I would say, a friend of mine uh, started a channel recently actually, you've got to do something that you enjoy. I sound like I'm ill. Do I sound like I'm ill? Gosh, I don't have time to be ill. I feel like I'm getting a bit bunged up. Um, you've got to do something you enjoy. And look guys, if you're sat there going, flipping it, Hannah, this is so boring, which to be fair it is because I've been talking for absolutely ages, start a channel. Like no one cares, all right? If you have a smartphone within reason, I think even if you have an iPhone 11, maybe if you have a 10, don't, don't iPhone 11, or I don't know what the equivalent is on Android, you can start a channel without a doubt. It's technically free to do. You just need to find some royalty free music. Editing is a bit slow and clunky, but if you have iMovie, you might have to pay 20 pounds a month for Premiere Pro or something if you're a Windows user, which is what I've had to do. Um, yeah, just start. Whether it's about gardening, I don't know, cleaning tips, showing, I don't know, bird watching, whatever it is you're interested in, your makeup tutorials, how to dress for under 50 pounds on an outfit, I don't know, whatever it is. Like you have to start somewhere and it doesn't mean that your entire channel is has to stick to that. Look at me, like my channel's nothing to do with what I started with. Um, you've got to start and a lot of people say, oh, there's so many vloggers, there's so many people out there. So, so what? And there's plenty more room for more people. I scroll through YouTube and I'm like, oh, I don't know who to watch. Like I always put on Instagram, who do you guys recommend to watch? Because there's still so many things that I wanna watch that no one's vlogging. Um, so if you are interested, just do it. Just don't use your real name. <laughs> oh, the main one I haven't answered is what's my job? Cause you're all nosy and I don't really blame you. I don't really mind people knowing a little bit about my day job. I have nothing to hide. Um, 
I'll tell you a little bit about it just because it probably isn't the main thing that I get asked. I work in fashion, but I work in licensing. So a few years ago, up until a couple of years ago, actually, or three years ago, I worked in buying. So yeah, I worked my way up from buyer's admin to a buyer. Um, and I enjoyed it for the most part. And before the pandemic, I was a bit like, I want to do something else. I want something bigger and better. Um, and licensing is something that I went into. So you're probably thinking, I don't really know what that is, Hannah, but you probably own something that is licensing. So you have a company, Company X, who owns the right to a character or IP, intellectual property. You might own something like a t-shirt that has Rolling Stones on it, for example. You might have I don't know, Harry Potter slippers, maybe. Snoopy, Pokemon, Minecraft, you know, just like stuff that is either a character, a game, a band, something where the place where you bought the t-shirt, the pajamas, the oven mitts, I don't know, the bedspread, they don't own the rights. So you may have bought it from Marks and Spencer's, Target, Walmart, I don't know, um, Asda. And then you buy it. So there's a lot of consumers' products that we see every day. You probably will start to notice it now, maybe, if you haven't before. You might go to the, the food store, to the supermarket, and you might see yogurts with a certain character on. You might see bottles of water with a character on. And you might go, oh, yeah, that's all right for kids. Okay, big whoop. Licensing is very big, even in the older age groups. So, you know, adults, grandparents, whatever. Um, it has become really, really big business. But anyway, there is this thing called licensing where their IP is added to a product and then normal people like us will buy them. And that is from entry price point, whether you're going to like the dollar store all the way through to somewhere like Harrods. Like I could go into Harrods and find five six hundred pound t-shirts that have a designer name on them and some kind of ip so that brand will work with the ip owner and create that product that's a very general overview of licensing so that's what i do um i don't mind people knowing but i do work for disney i talk a lot about this well I guess I touch on it quite a lot in videos which is maybe why I get asked this but anyway so yeah I work for Disney I don't really care if people know who I work for they're number one so I'm quite excited that I still work there I love it I love my job which is why I would never do this full-time guys that's another question I got asked a lot would never become a full-time YouTuber I'd actually do my head in I love my day job um so yeah Marvel Star Wars Simpsons 20th Century Fox Everything from, oh my gosh, High School Musical, Bob's Burgers, ESPN. Oh my God, what else do we have? The list is very, very long um, from, you know, movies coming out, Disney Plus releases, nostalgia from, yeah, Alice in Wonderland to The Mandalorian, you name it. I try to learn all of it. I think I'm pretty good at it. It helps that I'm a pretty big fan to start with. Um, and yeah, I work with different, I'm not gonna tell you exactly what I do, but I work with different brands. You either have a brand, I'm gonna make up a brand, but someone like Gucci. So you could go into Gucci and you may have seen this. There are bags with IP on that are very premium and wonderful all the way through to more entry price point brands that you may see on the high street and then retailers. So everyone from like a H&M all the way through to, um, yeah, Walmart, you know. So you get a big breadth of customer type as well. And people sometimes comment like, why do I care about the shops that I'm showing? And there's also a reason why I don't show certain shops as well. It's because I love it. I like genuinely love it. Um, seeing what's in a supermarket, seeing what's in a luxury store, it's just something that interests me and always has and always will. And it's closely linked to what I do in my day job. So I do spend a lot of, even before I did these videos, I spend a lot of time just looking at stuff. I just find it interesting from visual merchandising, the trends, what people are selling, how much they're selling it for, how quick the stock is turning. I just, it's if you're really into fashion, I don't know, maybe you're a buyer or merchandiser watching this, like you'll get where I'm coming from on this. Um, yeah, and then the other kind of, I guess, other party that you'd work with in licensing is a manufacturer, someone who makes stuff um doesn't necessarily have their 
obviously factory name in the back of it. It will be relabeled as a brand or as a retailer name. We then work with those people who then sell on to other people. And that's that's licensing. That's the same whether you are Warner Brothers, Universal Music, um, I don't know, General Motors. They will work with people direct or indirectly. Um, yeah, and I work with marketing, social media, to create ranges that you might be wearing um, while you watch the video, or maybe your kids wear. So that is what I do, Monday to Friday, and also indirectly the rest of the time, because I love it. I feel like that maybe is the last question, because I feel like I've rattled on for quite long enough, and I think you've probably all fallen asleep. But yeah, that does link to the, would I do this full time? As I said, no. I think I would actually lose my mind doing this full time. I think, I don't know how people do this full time obviously if you're earning millions <laughs> that's a different story I don't know I think I would just become so just engrossed in I don't know how people vlog their daily life because it's this weird thing and this is just me not being able to hack it I couldn't do it of going about your life but realizing that you need to make content and then are you really living your life or are you just creating a version of your life because you want it to come across a certain way I don't know and I don't know how people do it um I kind of give them a bit of respect for it because I think I would become so consumed in social media that I would actually like I say I think I'd just go a bit crazy to be honest with you um but anyway I'm gonna end the Q&A there because I think I I think I've answered everything just ticked over to 156,000 followers, which is absolutely hilarious. I'm so, so, so grateful for anyone who's subscribed. If you're not subscribed, do subscribe. I remember when those theme park videos that I made, I remember when all of them got 100 views and I was like, oh, 100 views. And it took me ages, all right, for anyone who's got a YouTube channel. It took me ages. I mean, I didn't do anything for about a year on the channel. Um, it took me, oh, that first thousand subscribers took forever. 10,000 took forever. Um, you just got to keep at it. And I guess this is what I want to do next year is just consistently upload every week. I think I had that little break in the summer. I've done something like 50, I think it was about nearly 60 videos um, over the last year which I'm pretty pleased with, to be honest with you, without having a total breakdown. And I think that probably ends the year. I'm very, very thankful for everyone who takes the time. It's really important to me, aside from this waffly Q&A, the, the 20 minutes that someone watches my videos for, there's a reason for you to spend the time out of your day. Um, I don't want to waste anyone's time. Some people might think that my channel's a complete waste of time, but that's fine. My channel, I want it to just be a fun 15, 20 minutes escapism where for a brief moment, you're hanging out with me. I don't know how to vlog any other way. <laughs> you know, it's like you're just hanging out with me and we're going shopping and we're looking at things and we're chatting away. Um, yeah, and it just feels like normal. I don't know. I don't, what, I don't tend to talk about real life things. This is not the news. You don't watch this channel for me to address proper things and I don't want to do that not because I'm not aware of it not because I don't have an opinion um it's not what I want to put on YouTube I want this to be a positive escape for a brief moment even if it is ignoring the elephant in the room of something that's happening in the real world um you know who knows but that on the most part is what I want to do um and that you leave I don't know feeling a little bit even just a little bit happier than you were when you started the video. Yeah, and I will try to continue to do that. I know I do get <laughs> trolled heavily for it of this woman's so weird. She's getting so excited over, I don't know, a cake. Why not, guys, in this life, why can't we get a bit excited over a bit of icing? You know, because we just have to try and see the positives and things. I don't talk about my personal life. Everyone has things going on and... It's like, you don't want to hear what I'm up to in my day to day. It's very boring, actually. If you have any requests, a lot of comments are, oh, well, can you show outside of London? Um, I will at some point. I don't know. Like I have been away a few times and I haven't recorded it um, because I do actually need a total break from just being at my computer or being on a camera um, and filming, which I'm sure you can appreciate.
and my camera battery is flashing, which is probably... Have I had this sticking out bit of hair the whole time? Yeah, I have. Whatever. Never mind. But yes, my camera battery is flashing at me, so I'm going to shut up. Um, and yeah, all I can say is, guys, if you would like to join me on another orbit around the sun, <laughs> subscribe. 2024. You might, I think people might be watching this in 2024, seeing as it's only around the corner. Um, all I can say is I'm going to wish you a very Merry Christmas if you celebrate it. If not, have a great Monday. Um, Happy New Year. If 23 was not it. It's all good. 24 is just around the corner. Let's make it a good one. Let's step into it together and um, see what it brings. Let's hope it's a good year for everyone. I wish you all as much health and happiness as possible. If I could send that to you and some positive vibes. Um, yes, I would. But yeah, this is weird. I feel sad that I'm saying bye to you guys. But yeah. Get running, get that five Couch to 5K app. I think it's only available in Europe, actually. It's a green logo. Have I put it on the screen? I don't know. The best thing, the best thing that I did, one of the best things I did this year. I will be running in January, trying to get a bit of health and fitness because we've only got one life. And um, yeah, I will see you very soon. Take care of yourselves, be kind to each other. And when in doubt, always say yes to cake. Bye, guys. The best day of the year. Yes, it is the best day of